One of the requests we see most often here at the Arkham Chronicle is for strategy videos. This is a little outside our wheelhouse, but how hard can it be, right? The most basic premise we can think of is... What is the first card each of the core investigators should put into their deck? Well, that doesn't sound too difficult, does it? So, starting off with Daisy. The first card, the, the most valuable pick, is... Uh, sleeves. Yes, sleeves! You're bloody useless! No, 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 we can do it. The, the, the Daisy, the... Yellow sleeves! We're gonna need a professional for this episode! Hospital phone! Right, you're gonna need to push the buttons, because I've only got two dimensions! Operator, long distance! Give me the United States of America! The Mythos Busters here. Right, which one are you? Well, my name is Ian. Well, I was hoping for the answer one, but you'll do! Have you got the script? The cards you should look for when you're building your deck. Yeah, that's it! You don't want to think of the talking, and I'll get one of our idiots to move the cards about. Trump, Trump! Hello, my name is Ian. I'm representing the rogue class, of course. And that means the investigator I'm looking at from the core set is Skids O'Toole. The first card I think about uh, when in building a Skids deck is actually Elusive. There's definitely some other candidates for this spot. But Elusive is the ultimate get-out-of-jail-get-out-of-anything-free card. It's basically a way to uh, teleport yourself away from any enemies. Even if there are no enemies, it's a way to just basically move like three or four locations in the blink. All right, in the next one. Hey guys, Sean here, and we're going to talk about purple cards. That's right, Agnes is up in your face because, you know what, if, uh, if you don't feel like being a spell-slinging sorceress from another dimension is the best thing in the world, I think you need to reevaluate your life priorities. So the first card you should look at for Agnes is Shriveling. Because you know what? Enemies are a thing in this game that you need to kill. And how Agnes kills them, aside from her own awesome ability, is Shriveling. You use your willpower, you do damage. Sometimes you take horror and do more damage. What's not to love? Right, next one! What's up, guys? Your true blue mythos buster here, Nick. And I'm here to talk to you about my favorite investigator in the core box. And that is none other than Roland Banks himself. And when you're building a Roland deck, you want weapons. Every weapon. And not only that, you want the best weapon in the game right now. And that, of course, is the machete. The machete is a solid weapon that will do you good no matter the situation, especially in solo mode. And when you're playing solo Roland, <laughs> let's be honest, you don't need anybody else. Ooh, he's very manly, isn't he? Right, send me the new guy! Hey guys, this is Scott, the new guy from the Mythos Busters podcast. My favorite investigator from the Arkham Horror LCG core set is Wendy. The first card I usually grab for Wendy is Lucky. The ability to play Lucky after the Chaos Bag draw to turn an almost lose situation into a barely pass situation is amazing. See? That's how it's done! Now you give it a try! We think that the first pick for any Daisy deck should be the Old Book of Law. Her investigator ability means that using the Old Book of Law is a guaranteed free action. As Daisy isn't much of a frontline fighter, she doesn't need her hands free for weapons, and so can make this a priority until she gets her tote bag out. Getting to pick one card out of three means there's three times the chance of you accessing something useful. And because you shuffle the rest back into your deck, you totally mitigate your weakness. Daisy with two copies out means for one action, she can draw two cards out of a pool of six. And this card works on any investigator at her location, making it strong both in solo and in multiplayer. There's no reason not to use this every round, particularly as card draw is relatively scarce. And this is risk-free card draw. Who were those masked men? For anyone unaware, the Mythos Busters are a podcast dedicated to the Arkham Horror Living Card Game. They also have a blog which features strategy articles from a variety of guest authors. They actually predate the launch of the game itself and were probably the first dedicated media for it. We were eagerly devouring their content long before this channel was ever thought of. They release episodes sparingly, but each one is a multi-hour epic. If you only dip into the game occasionally, this is a great format, as they hoover up all the news, articles and releases since their last episode to keep you up to speed. And best of all, they put all their non-game ramblings right at the end of the episode, as opposed to going off on tangents mid-podcast. So if you don't want Diana Stanley fanfiction, you can skip it!